It is party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show in the Mothership, which is Studio 22. The Puppet Master Mark is driving at the helm, taking us into the nether regions, which is the place we want to be. <laughs> at the pub, hot news, Natalie, party foul, Steve, and the mic drop himself, Mike Ritland, the man I'm afraid of. I read Clint Emerson's book, uh, Right Kind of Crazy, and I'll Never See You the Same Way Ever Again. <laughs> Well, and then you told me about your diet, about how you eat nothing but meat. Yeah, most people don't see me the same way anymore. <laughs> and it but, uh, makes that story so much more yeah. relevant. I, I wasn't eating that way then. Yeah. It's yeah. mostly gummy bears and triscuits back You then. just couldn't pass it. I was all, all messed up. I, we were in uh, <laughs> Singapore, of all places. And, yeah, I ended up getting a Clint Emerson finger enema in Singapore. <laughs> so It was more of a fist, more of and a he fist said, enema. He said it took a solid two fingers, and, yeah. and uh, they That's, just brought the whole platoon in to watch. Yeah, well, I mean, both his hands were on my shoulders. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, the, uh, you got 15, 14 other guys uh, – <coughs> watching it's pretty... beautiful when a guy like clint emerson is your medic and he oh, writes a tell-all book I, I i will say it will keep you from uh, malingering like yeah. you, you're absolutely going to be sick if you go to him because uh <laughs> he'll he'll make you earn it my uh clint's probably listening right now i, I the guy so. scares me yeah he, he makes me it. nervous because he just doesn't care yeah, i know it just zero shits given hey uh is it a deal, like, if you know you're going to be a Navy SEAL, like, as soon as you get out of BUDS, they, they pound the trident on your chest, and then they give you a book contract? Usually, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a little tighter about it now, but, uh, but yeah, for most guys, if it's worth writing, they'll just they'll hook you right up. Well, Clint's book is an easy read because three-fourths of it is redacted, yeah. so you just skip through the X'd out pages. <laughs> well, and the other quarter of it is uh, illustrations, gra graphic novel <laughs> yeah. illustrations. So, it, yeah. Which is a, f a cool idea yeah. that he did. He's got that yeah. guy who did DC Comics forever and, and write the illustrations because you can't quite get pictures yeah. to, to justify that no, whole thing. Sure. So. Yep. Right kind of crazy and 100, 100 deadly skills. And, of course, you got to get Mike Ritland's books as well, as well as listen to the podcast. If you're looking at how to train your dog as, as, a, as a fur missile assassin, Mike Ritland's your guy, tricos.com. Uh, we're hanging out today in the hot seat with the legendary Stu Bergeer. The legendary Stu Bergeer. And I, I say, Stu, that you're legendary because you've had to put up with Glenn for now, what, 50, 60 years? Oh, it seems like it. <laughs> uh, just last week felt like 50, 60 years. Uh, yeah, no, it's been a long time. I mean, it goes back to uh, the late 90s yeah. when Glenn was, um, you know, he looked about 50 years younger and, uh, and he was about one third the size. Yeah. Uh, so it's been quite a quite a revolution over the years. Hey, every now and then while you're talking, I'm just going to go. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this. <laughs> this is agonizing. The just yawn, yawn in your thing. face. Every time I start talking, he yawns. And I was like, I know I'm boring. I know I don't have a lot of friends. No one's really interested in what I say. But can you not yawn in my face? Yeah. And, and, and the poor control room. Every time I start talking, they have us on the split screen, and they have to like immediately switch to the full screen of just me, because he's in the middle of a forty-five second yawn. Yeah. I, you know, I'll be there. Sit, I'll sit there and try to talk with Glenn. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you're on the radio, on television, or just sitting in a room somewhere, and he does that. And I'm like, God, I know I'm nobody, but jeez, <laughs> it really <laughs> you're is horrible for self-esteem, Glenn. Yeah. He, he, I, it's not meant to be rude. No, I know. Um, it just is. It's just weird. He's <laughs> just on the spectrum is. somewhere, right? It, it is. You know, it's funny. We, we actually noticed a tick that he has uh, mm -hmm. on radio, which he will do. I mean, Glenn is, you know, he's an amazing talent. And I, I don't know how the heck he gets all the crap done and he gets done in a day, especially when he can right. barely stay awake during the show. But he'll go through this, like, really passionate sort of, like, monologue. And he's just, you know, ranting. And he's just in his, you know, full Glenn Beck mode. The second he starts the commercial, it's a yawn. Every time. Every time. It's like this like internal brain thing that just ticks the yawn on as soon as he said, and hey, the sponsor is half hour. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I can't. And so like half of my job is just waiting for the yawns to fill the spaces. Because yeah. when he takes that deep breath, I know I have to just like blurt out the rest of whatever sentence I thought he was saying. Don't they, isn't that the deal? Like you, you yawn when your brain hasn't gotten enough oxygen. So when you're talking as much as Glenn talks. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to breathe. Like it part, breathing's theory. part of talking. In theory, I think at this point, like you know, look the uh, 
the the level of uh, aerobic uh, exercise Glenn is achieve <laughs> is, is able to achieve at this point in his life is is limited. Yeah. Uh, no ultra marathons in his near future. No. Uh, I think just the sitting and talking at this point really exhausts him. Yeah, which is kind of sad. Get a Nerf gun and start start <laughs> shooting it in his mouth every yeah. time he yeah. just light. That's him a up. great yeah. idea. Yeah. That's this, these are the ideas I need. I, I, I don't know. come over to the studio enough. I need to get ideas just like this. Yeah, then Glenn chokes on a damn Nerf dart. Uh, <laughs> And you know what, Glenn catch it, and we're going to talk, because Stu has a new show coming out, Stu Does the World, and I'm glad you have this coming out, because, you know, your old show that you did, there was a lot of production that went into that, there was a lot, um, uh, some, something's off of Stuber gear. Yeah, well, no, well what, no, uh, wait, we're going, no, we're mashing, not, okay, so it's Stu Does something. America, because I, I, I haven't new spread one. my seed about the old widely one. enough to be Stu Does the World, Yeah, and then it's, Stu uh, Does one, America, one, yeah, and then Wonderful World of Stu, you're getting Wonderful those two. World of Stu, yeah. who did the somethings of it? That and was that was Andrew Heaton, Heaton. Uh, yeah. yeah, I looked at the buffalo right there, who we call Mighty Heaton, uh. that used to be, let me bring it all full circle for you, those of you watching, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm an idiot, but I will explain why I'm an idiot, mm -hmm. Um, off my meds, but besides that, so Mighty Heat and the Buffalo used to be in uh, he Andrew Heaton's studio. Your studio space is actually on the location that, where Heaton's set used to be. That, that's true. That's you want to talk about a guy I don't miss, <laughs> Andrew Heaton. <laughs> really? I love you. I, I love, love you, Andrew. Andy. Uh, you, I just don't miss him. You just don't miss the, him. The uh, I love him too. The but anyway, so Stu does America. Thank you. Stu does America, mm -hmm. and then I always enjoyed. Everything that you did, there's a lot of production that went into it. This deal, how's how's this show different? Uh, it's going to be, in, first of all, uh, the big difference. You know, Wonderful World of Stew, we did yeah about 15, 20 episodes a year. Yeah, um, it was a weekly show, a half hour, and you're right, like a lot of production, and we did a lot of uh, produced uh, bits, and we'll do some of that in the new show. This is going to be five nights a week, though, so yeah. five nights a week for an hour. Probably not going to be as much production um, as far as uh, you know the recorded bits and all that stuff. There's just so much you can do in a, in a day, um, but it's going to be a lot more timely that was the one you know downside of of wonderful world of stew which we right. really love doing I, I like going back and watching those shows so i can remind myself that i used to know things about things <laughs> um but fun show though it was yeah, it was fun, fun and, and, and but we ha you know you're always kind of forced to do those topics that aren't related to necessarily that day's news like you might do something on global warming generally but it's not the thing that the person said yesterday on global warming yeah. um you know so you you you, you miss stuff like you know going over the you know debates or going over whatever big breaking news thing yeah. is going on we had to kind of plan in advance and a lot of times you know the america's in this position where they want to talk about some huge pressing issue and we're like uh i've got something on uh plastic straws i i like them and i hate if anyone gives me a paper one i'm gonna burn the building to the ground yeah. and that was that's not necessarily always in the uh, it's always in my uh, yeah. purview but not necessarily america so this is going to be kind of a cool different thing and be able to talk about things uh, that are going on in the news every single day uh, and we'll still be doing some of the production and funny yeah. stuff as well so but if you go to blaze tv.com you can still get the old wonderful world yes series, right? every yeah. episode yeah, uh, they're all there. seven seasons um uh, every episode is up there uh, now they it took a while but now you can get them all and like the good thing about that show is that they're all pretty timeless i mean yeah. generally speaking there's a few exceptions to that but i mean i was just uh, it's become a christmas tradition for me to watch watch my idiot self in the uh, our, our short film a christmas twist which was uh, basically a parody of those like hallmark and lifetime christmas mm -hmm. movies which i freaking love like they're just so incredibly terrible everyone has the same plot with like the businessman who's just just doesn't love christmas and then there's of course the the woman who is you know or it could be a reverse yeah. sometimes the woman's the business person and then they go to the town and then the guy just you know he just he just loves christmas but she's too busy She's just built a career, and that's her whole thing. And then usually, like, there's a guy who has a beard, and you wind up finding out it's Santa Claus who lives in the town yeah. or whatever it is. It's the same plot every single time. So uh, we were able to do a lot of that stuff, and you can go back and watch all of it. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And you can watch in every opening. You can watch the ball bounce off Stu's face. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Hey, folks, if you own a car or a house, you know that shopping for insurance is a mind-numbing, soul-sucking process that can take absolutely forever. But you need to have insurance. You can't go without it. But I want you to stop overpaying for it. You can get a lower rate for the exact same coverage you already have with help from Gabby. You've heard me talk about this. Gabby takes the pain out of shopping for insurance by giving you an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of your current coverage 
With 40 of the top insurance providers, you've heard of them, Progressive, Nationwide, Travelers. Just link your current insurance account, and listen, in about two minutes on that website, they're going to give you quotes for the exact same coverage that you currently have. That's what I did, went on there, literally took me a few minutes, logged in using my current insurance provider within just 120 seconds, seriously, two minutes I had a flood of competitive quotes that were automatically saving me 15% or more. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to get spammed, I'm going to get called, and I'm going to get just enamored with all of these. You will, That will not happen to you with Gabby. Listen, Gabby customers have, they save $825 per year on average. And if they can't find you savings like they did for me, They'll let you know so you can relax knowing you have the best rate out there. They saved me 15% on what I already was covered under, but they saved me the money on it. You need to do this thing. It's free to use. They'll never sell your info, so don't worry about the spam or the robocalls. Take the two minutes right now. Start saving on your car, your homeowner's insurance. Go to Gabby.com slash WatchChad, and for a limited time, if they can't find you savings on your insurance, they're going to give you a $10 Amazon gift card. That's Gabby, G-A-B-I dot com slash WatchChad, Gabby.com slash WatchChad. Listen, terms and conditions apply. See the site for details. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. You know, so I'm walking down the streets of Tampa with, uh, you know, a suit on, but instead of pants, I had a, a pink tutu. Yeah. And, you know, I'm walking all over the town and people, I mean, I guess it wasn't that weird for Tampa, yeah. um, but it was, it was a little odd. Uh, and then it ends with me getting hit in the face with a, with a soccer ball, which if you've followed any of the coverage of CTE uh, with the NFL, like getting hit in the head multiple times for multiple yeah. takes, not always the best idea. Especially from that angle. That's a knockout angle. Oh, yeah. Turn in the skull. And like, you know, of course I know it's coming, right? And it's super slow-mo. So you can't, he had to like surprise me with it or it wouldn't look authentic. Right. Um, so I lost about 40% of brain function, but it, it was a good open. <laughs> It's a great open. It's fantastic. <laughs> I just watched that on repeat. Just boom, there it is. Uh, yeah, get down there in Tampa. Go to Gaspar. What is it? Gasparilla. Gasparilla. They have down oh. there. Everybody's wearing a tutu. Oh man, pirate Gaspar- tutus. Because yeah, that's where we started. Was uh, in Tampa. The yeah. Glenn's show started. It was actually twenty uh, twenty years ago this week. Yeah. Um, it was the first radio show we did, kind of of this uh, you know formation that eventually turned into the syndicated show. Um, and so we were in Tampa when we uh, when we started that. And they used to do this thing, the station, 970 WFLA, would do coverage of the Gasparilla Parade. Right. Now, if you want to talk about a terrible programming decision, it's parade coverage on radio. Like, that is not <laughs> a good idea. Like, you're not seeing anything. Here comes a float. Here comes another float. Like, well, that's the entire <laughs> yeah. thing. So we, uh, it was me, uh, Glenn, and Jeffy. Mm-hmm. And we would go down um, and, and get forced to do this coverage. It was like a thing you had to do when you were on the station. And we didn't want to do it. So we decided in, we were going to do the worst parade coverage possible and try to get fired so they wouldn't make us do it again every single year. And uh, some of those tapes, I'm just, I, I hope they burned these tapes. <laughs> Jeffy claims he uh, has them. Puppet Master, can we uh, tell Candace, please, to get our hands on some of this footage? Oh, no, I don't we, think that's a good idea. We need um, to find this. This is yeah, out there we'll, somewhere. We'll search the archives. We'll find it. <laughs> we need to get a hold of some of this stuff. Jeffy I, claims he has it, and I swear, like, if we ever do something really bad to him, he's going to release it uh, yeah. in the public. But it, I don't know at this point what all you guys could do to Jeffy to yeah. be worse than what you've done to Jeffy <laughs> I, at this stage. I, I don't understand. I think I always say to him, like yes we're insulting to you yes we call you a lot of terrible names but we're the best thing that happens to you every day it's got to be worse for you at home i and- just, i walked past jeffy like from day one and i was like hey f you and i was like he's like you don't even know me and i'm like yeah but i thought that was what we did around here there is something about jeffy i don't know what it is i love like i mean i love the guy i would never tell him that sure i love him to death no. but like he's one of these guys that people will legitimately walk in and meet him for the first time and like just call him fat to yeah. his face and you're like i 
how is this right and okay? Yeah. But it is. I don't know why. And he's also the same way because when he comes, when he uh, he was down in Florida, and the first day you meet him, he is like the biggest jerk in the world. He right. seems like the like uh, the he comes off horribly to everybody because he's just right. like that miserable curmudgeon he is in year ten that you know him mm-hmm. that he is on day one. He doesn't. There's no warm opening with Jeffy. It's just like it's just dark the whole time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. That's oh, absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Tell oh, yeah. me about it. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, so, he, you know, everyone basically hates him for the first few months that they know him, yeah. typically. Um, and when we went up to, when we hired him to come back to go up to, uh, where we were uh, working up north, the whole staff was new. He didn't know any of them. And he, like, they all just hated him. I mean, they hated him for months. And it's like, Jeffy's like, like sort of like a rash. Like, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, at first, a big, it's really, bulbous. <laughs> Yes. yes, like it's really irritating at first, and eventually you get to that point where it's just part of your life, and you and you just can't do anything about it. I, I like I, sometimes I still get a little bit scared of him. Like we joke around or whatever, and I'm like, what if what if he's like really pissed? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, you know, <laughs> Pat occasionally will fall into this trap where yeah. you know he'll feel bad for Jeffy, and then you know we'll be talking about something, and he'll he'll be ah oh, we shouldn't do that. And the one time we went to, um, it was a, it was a speech out in, I think we were in, I think we were in Salt Lake and it was me, um, uh, Pat and Jeffy on stage. And, and we, you know, it was a, there's a big crowd there that yeah. day. It was one of our big events and we did like a kind of a pre-show and we're sitting there and we're, and we're going back and forth and we're telling stories and people are asking questions. And at one point someone asked a question like, what are you guys like? Do you guys really hate Jeffy? Like, what's the deal? Which is a, honestly a rational question sure. at the time. And so we kind of went into the tr- the truth of it, which is like, you know, look, Jeffy's a we love Jeffy. I trust Jeffy. Uh, you know, to the to the end of the world, like he's a great. He's actually a really great guy, and I love the dude. But um, and, and uh, you know, we bust on each other, but it's all in good fun. We're good friends. In the middle of our answer, Glenn actually grabs the microphone. He walks into the room. He wasn't even in the room. Walks into the room, grabs the microphone, and cuts us off and says, do not do that. He gets mad at us for telling the truth because <laughs> yeah. it just it's a letdown to the audience yeah. to know that we actually like Jeff. They want him to be a curmudgeon. He, he would not allow a 30 second positive comment <laughs> to no. be made about Jeffy. That's how much we hate Jeffy. Don't say a good thing. <laughs> I, his dressing room door was open the other day. The lights were on. His computer screen was on. He wasn't in there. I went in there and I just saw a post-it note and I wrote, "You're gay." <laughs> and I thought about signing my name to it, and then I thought, nah, let's just let him wonder. <laughs> let's, hope, let's let him believe it's Glenn. Yeah, just you know? put it in there. <laughs> just put it in there. Jeffy Fisher, Chewing the Fat with Jeffy. You can get that podcast as well. I encourage everybody. Here's the thing that I ran into the other day. So our show, this show, this podcast is on YouTube. You get it for free. We encourage people to subscribe. And then we tell people, we say, you know, hey, we're giving it to you. I mean, we're giving you this content. People are like, well, if you'd put it anywhere else besides YouTube, because we just don't believe in YouTube. Okay, well, then go to blazetv.com and sign up. Mm-hmm. So it's one or the other. You can get free content that you bitch about, right? Yep. Or you can bitch about having to pay for the content that is actually free, mm-hmm. right? So if you want it unadulterated and uncensored, then pay for it. Yeah. No, I look, I. Pay I'm- for it. Go get on blazetv.com. Like your show. This show, get it unadulterated. Yeah, look, blazetv.com is a great place to go because you can get all the shows, right? All of them. All of them unadulterated and all the archives, as you point out. Um, you know, and of course, like, if you really don't like YouTube, you can go to get it on podcast, and there's a bunch of ways to get yeah. it. We try to make it as easy as possible. That was one of the cool things I liked about the the new show because the wonderful world of Stu, for, you know, for all I really loved about it, was always behind the paywall. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we couldn't even post clips of it most of the time. Um, so no one really, unless you were a Blaze TV subscriber, you didn't really know it existed. Uh, like this is a new thing, right? Like now your show's already on YouTube. People are taking it in like crazy. Like hopefully the same thing happens to my show. It's going to be on YouTube, uh, dot com slash Stu does America. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go there, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. Uh, you know, because it, it, that's the world we're in now. I think like people want to be able to consume this stuff and take it in and enjoy themselves for yeah. free. Look, the Blaze TV thing, I think, too, is like, yes, you get it unadulterated. The, the programming's great. You get a lot of great shows. Um, but it's also, I think, part of a movement, right? Mm-hmm. Like Blaze TV as a thing 
is a guard against the media. It's a guard against cancel culture, right? right? It's a guard against everything. Every time that you say a man is a man and a woman is a woman and you get and you lose your job over it, mm-hmm. that's what this is built for. It's built to have people who have voices that can actually say the opposite, say what they believe is true without that concern. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I always think of that like, you know, you want to get our shows, you can get our shows. You know, you watch them and you know, we've done an ad-supported radio show for a million years and, you yeah. know, it's like that's a totally cool way to take it in and we lo- we appreciate if you do it but you take that next step to uh blaze tv i i think of that now at the beginning it was cool right like it was cool we're building a kind of a cool club and and it was a it was a great way to be able to you know put food on the table and all of that it's become something different because you watch right. what happens to Steven Crowder on YouTube. You watch what happens to the conservative personalities who are constantly getting taken down, who are losing all their ad support and all of that. Um, you need a place. Yeah. I mean, we we joke about safe spaces, but, you know, the First Amendment is supposed to guarantee the entire country is a safe space. Right. And, it, you know, look, the First Amendment's still there, but it's being ignored all too often. I always remind myself, like they, they give me almost carte blanche freedom to say what I want to say. It's a huge mistake by them, right? Big time. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, you know, and I'm going to keep pushing the envelope a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very rarely, very rarely does some of the higher ups, you know, the upstairs up there that breathe the rarefied air in the executive suites up there, (laughs) every now and then I'll get a phone call and they're like, you might not want to say that. <laughs> but for the most part, they give me the freedom to just do what I want to do. Yeah. And Candace has editing power. I mm. mean, there's been times, there's been plenty of things that have happened in this room that she's like, we're not airing that. Right? You, and I agree. Have you ever edited in additional offensive content? <laughs> there's There's been a highlight reel that I'm just working on yeah. constantly. Uh, it, but I can say there's about three <coughs> hours of unaired footage that no one will ever see. Yeah. Well, Put that's your retirement package Put right it there. with Jeffy's Gasparilla footage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm, I'm again, I'm like a Navy SEAL book. There's a lot of me that's been redacted. <laughs> so you want to pull that back and never share that stuff. And I'm okay with it because there's times when, you know, maybe we've sat in here and, and shared a drink and shared a bunch of drinks. And after, by episode seven, we're like, F it, I'm going to sit in the pub. Steve, you're the host. <laughs> yep, that's happened. <laughs> and Steve is the ultimate Barney Fife. Like, people aren't coming to Steve for analysis. But I'm like, screw it. I think you got this one. Got it. <laughs> 100%. And I want to get something out right now. I want to get, and Stu, you're the perfect guy for this. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm. Um, you're the perfect guy for this because this is something that pisses me off. I get sick of this. People hear Blaze TV, they hear Blaze Media, and they immediately think Glenn Beck. And people have an opinion about Glenn Beck. Me personally, I love Glenn. Glenn doesn't live on the same planet we live on. He's out here somewhere <laughs> in the ethereal, just th- dreaming things. Sure. That's what he is. I'll never forget Glenn came to me. How's your show going? And I said, I think he's going pretty good. You got to cry. You got to tell him the world's ending. You got to really break it down. I mean, you got to really. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I know you're joking. But I also know you're telling me some right. things here. But people say, well, I just don't like Glenn because Glenn was anti-Trump and blah, blah, blah. Well, so I was not for Trump either once upon a time. Mm-hmm. Anybody that knows me knows that. I was for Ted Cruz. I believe Ted Cruz was the right guy. And then we've had to come through this whole deal. And and, and Glenn ran Trump down the road. And so <laughs> be it. That's the deal. I mean, that's that we do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we that, do that kind of thing. Your job. A year later, you come back, and Glenn's like, okay, so I was wrong on some things, yeah. right? But people still, they don't want to just let it go and listen to the analysis. They think that you're kissing the ring or whatever. The thing I like about you, the thing I like about Glenn is you guys, and so many others that I can list off, you're honest. You talk about what you believe in, your convictions, and there's no ass-kissing going on around here. Yeah, you know, I have a sort of a you know, unique ability to not care what people think, right. which does not serve me well in regular life often. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I think with this sort of job, it's what I've always wanted out of a, a show. Yeah. Like if you I always think of this as a test. If you are wa- li- watching or listening uh, to a show and you're not sure whether the person who's speaking is actually believing the thing they're saying, why the hell are you there? Yeah. Right. Like the point here, I, I always feel like, you know, the shows I really love um, and the analysts that I really love surprise me. Sometimes, you know, I think they're going to be on one side of the issue and they're on the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I just want someone who's at least thinking honestly. They're not just, you know, auto plug and play a pro Trump or anti Trump. You see this with CNN. Like there, there was a time where CNN was just liberal where they were a liberal yeah. source of news, and I disagree with their analysis, you know, a lot. Uh, but at least I thought there was people there who were trying to bring the truth, uh, you know, in, in the way that they saw it. They saw it a different way than me, but I can t- take that. I'm an adult, right? Yeah. Uh, now, you know, Trump, 
For, I mean, he has basically made all of those people insane. Um, and there's a couple of exceptions here, I should point out, but it's 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 relatively rare now, right. where they have come uh, full circle and become activists against Trump, where they've thought they've come to this conclusion internally <coughs> that doesn't this thing we used to do where we would sort of give people the impression we were giving each other, you know, both sides. Yeah. That's it's too. This is too important a time. We need to get this guy out by all means necessary. Um, and that is like that's that's not that's not interesting. Forget the fact that it's wrong and it's terrible for the country and it's terrible for for discourse. It's also boring, yeah. which might be the biggest sin of all. Um, you you want to be able to find somebody who's actually telling the truth, at mm. least as they see it. Um, I know you guys do that. I know, you know, we have a lot of people, I think, at The Blaze that do that. Um, but there's also, like, you know, occasionally, we were talking about this with Van Jones the other night. Now, Van Jones is a guy that Glenn has quite the history with. Sure. Um, you know, but on CNN, he's one of the only people who will sit back the other night and admit, hey, uh, I don't see anything here that is going to defeat Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. We need to do a lot better. He's honest that he wants to defeat Donald Trump. He's telling you. Yeah. But he's also saying, these guys suck. And you watch the thing, everybody knows it who's watching realizes that that field is a terrible field of candidates. And like while, you know, I certainly would agree with Van Jones on zero out of 100 things, yeah. at least he's there to, uh, he seems to be one of the only honest people over there who's actually saying what they believe. And I think that's kind of what makes this stuff interesting, right? I mean, you know, the Trump thing is a good <clears throat> example. Like we, you know, we were really tough on Trump. And I, yeah. I was pretty much, you know, I was convinced he was going to start naming people from The Apprentice to the Supreme Court. Like that's where I thought this <laughs> thing was going. I did. I was not hopeful. But he's exceeded my expectations uh, yeah. by a, a good amount, especially when it comes to judges and stuff. So, you know, you look at these things, you do, you, you pick what you think is going to happen, you analyze them and with the best information possible, and then you consistently judge yourself as to how you did and how mm -hmm. you can improve next time. Who would have thought that a washed up game show host could do so well as the leader of the free world? I mean, no one, no. nobody. And I know that there's folks out there who say, I knew from day one, Trump was the guy. Yeah. Come on. It's hard to imagine. I mean, you know, it, look, I was a Trump kid. Like, you know, I grew up, I was born in New York. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Connecticut. Um, I bought Trump the game when I was like 12. <laughs> <laughs> legitimately had Trump the game. I'm going to screw the Jews, I, <laughs> and I'm going to screw the Italians, and we're going to build hotels. <laughs> that was one card in the deck, yes. Um, and, and, and they had uh, uh, the Art of the Deal. I, I read Art of the Deal as a very nerdy kid. Right. Um, and, I, you know, I love Donald Trump, and I, 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 you know, I don't know that as I grew up, I thought he would make a good president. I right. don't think it was a good, it doesn't seem like the package necessarily that you want. And there's stuff that I can still complain about. I, I don't sure. I, I don't love everything that dude does, but you know, look, he's definitely exceeded my expectations by a wide margin. And I could sit here and say, oh no, I was for him the whole time, or no, he still sucks. You see, how many people do you see that were against Trump during, you know, the, um, you know, the, uh, the primaries, mm -hmm. and then now just sound like they are an MSNBC host, right? right. Like, there's no value in that either. You know, you have to be able to say, okay, balls and strikes, here's what's good, here's what's bad, and also just not care what people say and if they if they judge you like that. And you know, look, I think, you know, some stuff that we've uh, you know, talked about over the years has not helped business. I remember going back in, uh, you know, the 2000s and Glenn was uh, very pissed off about George W. Bush and his spending and his stuff he was doing on the border. You know, our program directors did not like that. And I agree 100%. Yeah. I've said that on this show about yeah. George W. So yeah. same same issues. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you you just you have to let it fly. We Our you know philosophy has kind of always been like, look, it might hurt us in the short term, but long term, I think you look at that and you say, OK, well, I remember when he was, you know, Glenn's a great example. I remember when he was viscerally uh, anti-Trump. Mm -hmm. And now you hear him talking about Ukraine. That gives him a lot of credibility on that. Yeah. You know, someone who supported Trump from the beginning, who's saying he didn't, you know, the, this Ukraine crap is, is bull crap. At some level, you don't know whether they just support him on everything. You do know with Glenn. Glenn opposed, you know, opposed him pretty hard uh, and now is saying, like, look, I've looked at the facts of this. We've looked deep into it. And here's what I believe is true. And I think, you know, that's that's the ultimate credibility. And to kind of pull back the curtain and show you the wizard and give you the, you know, that fourth wall, let's tear it down. Glenn puts a lot of work into that. Oh, yeah. He puts a lot of work. He, like, Glenn can be Glenn all day, every day. Glenn can do radio. He can do his podcast. He can do the Glenn Beck show. He can do all of these things. He doesn't have to do these exposés and these documentaries. He doesn't have to do these things. A lot of work mm -hmm. by a lot of people go into this.
And Glenn, I mean, he's in there working the boards. You know, he's getting his stuff all set up for these specials. He doesn't have to do that, right? And, no. and to think that there was, have been no repercussions from, say, the White House for Glenn's stances on things. There have been. People don't understand the price you pay. It's not just, oh, well, he's now he's trying to kiss the president's ass to get back. That's not it. And that's what I appreciate about Glenn, appreciate about so many people that own this deal. I mean, you got a guy like uh, our own Eric Bowling who says, well, I get my news from CNN and Morning Joe. And I'm like... Bro, <laughs> <laughs> how can you take that? I'm so Bro. sorry. Yeah. And, and here's a guy who has a show, you know, yeah. America with Eric Bowling. I mean, he's on Blaze TV, yep. and you, but, you know, he's honest about that whole deal. Yeah, and he, that's where he gets his news, and, and he winds up still usually being on Trump's side on these issues. And yeah. again, like, it, you want to have someone who's taking in, you know, you don't want someone who's just regurgitating Donald Trump's Twitter feed to you. You know, right. you want someone who's actually thinking about it. I, and I've, I always say he's not a messiah. He doesn't walk on water. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to say things that you're going... You know, I heard him speak down in West Palm a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, you get in these 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 um, turbines, these these windmills are like a bird graveyard. Have you ever seen a bird graveyard just go underneath one of these windmills, you know? And they'll kill bald eagles, too, by the way. Uh, and if they kill more than five bald eagles, you got to shut them down. I don't even know that. I know more than anybody else on, on wind turbines, and they're just, they're just spewing gases into the air and, and fumes and exhaust. And I'm like... This is a comedy bit, right? <laughs> this is a comedy bit. I mean, you've never seen so many dead birds in your life. I don't know if people realize that I'm an expert on these these things and you know what you know that I know. But there's a bird graveyard. Yeah, I, I, it's funny because you know, with, it really is the thing with with uh, with Donald Trump is like you get categories out of the things he says. Right. You don't get specifics. Right. Like everyone wants to look at the things that he says and like analyze them and say, okay, I can't believe the president said that. When in reality, what you can do is put it in a box. Like if he says something about uh, Iran, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could say, oh, the cultural sites thing is a good example of this. Like he's going to bomb 52 cultural sites. There is no chance that Donald Trump is going to send his military to bomb 52 cultural sites, which is blatant opposition of international law. Everyone knows that in his military. Like we know these things like he's not going to go do that. We're not the Taliban. We're not going to go blow up other people's religious sites right. unless, they're, you know, you're hiding terrorists in there. That you know, But I mean, we're not going to do it intentionally to hurt them. But what you can do is take that statement and put it in a box that says he's tough on Iran. That's yeah. what you learn out of that, right? He's tough on Iran, and he's going to say it in a colorful way. Yeah. That's what Donald Trump does. Like, and it, what's really frustrating about watching the media is they all know this, and every time he does it, they act as if it's the first time. Yeah, it's this. Oh my gosh, this is the exact literal thing he says. Let's bring in an expert on on war crimes to discuss it. It's like it, there's no need to do that. <laughs> if, if you if you look at what he does <coughs> rather than what he says, you're going to have a picture of a Republican leaning president that is, uh, you know that that is much more refined than uh, than he comes off on Twitter. If you try yeah. to make him into a Twitter personality, which is, you know, of course, a big part of his charm to a lot of the, the country, but it's it's not his policy. I mean, he's been very tough on Russia policy-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he says nice things about Vladimir Putin, I mean, the guy's got some nice pecs. you got to say some nice things about him. <laughs> I, I mean, he's a bear daddy. Yeah. <laughs> daddy bear. <laughs> yeah, my LGBTF, what, what did I add? LGBTQF? I added fag. Oh my God! I added fag. Yeah. This is one of the times you get the call from my upstairs. Thing. Exactly. Well, so mm -hmm. if they can bring back queer, which I'm glad they brought back queer because mm -hmm. that's a great word. Mm -hmm. I can bring back fag. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that that's the hill you necessarily probably just don't need advisor. to die on that one. Right, yeah, like probably. when Steve Steve dressed up like Al Baghdadi and went in blackface. Right, but potentially that's another. Right. <laughs> See, like, like now Gaston Mooney, our, our network president, mm -hmm. he said, "I don't think that's a hill." You like, <laughs> is there really any return on that investment? And I was like, "Well, let's see." Let's yeah. just see. Well, and right? yeah, as you know, uh, d dressing up in blackface is only excusable if you approve of taxes that are sufficiently Thank high you. enough and you want abortion to be easy enough and you want to be, you know, you are all on the glo global warming bandwagon. <laughs> then you can have blackface. I mean, Trudeau knows this. Northam knows this. Mm -hmm. Are you anti-Second Amendment enough? Then blackface is totally fine. That's right. There's this guy who, uh, I, I don't know the show. You guys might know it, that uh, tattoo reality show. Judge, did you hear the story? I didn't hear it. So he was a judge on a reality show, some tattoo one. It was 13 years. Okay. Now I watched approximately zero tattoo reality shows. Um, however, yeah. I, it seems like it was a popular one if it existed for 13 <laughs> years. So he was a judge on the show, and someone digs up his old MySpace page. There we go. Okay. And on his MySpace page on Halloween, he had two pictures of himself in blackface. He was one. He was dressed up as I, I don't know if it was Shaquille O'Neal or Carl Malone or it was you know he's dressed up in a Lakers uniform, um, and another one I think is a superhero. <clears throat> and they dug these pictures up. Controversy erupts now. 
I look at this and I'm like, well, him dressed as a Laker in blackface is exactly what Jimmy Kimmel did exactly. on national television, yet he is sufficiently for high enough taxes and easy enough abortion and, 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 and tough enough guns So and free enough health care, right? So he's okay. He can continue to be on ABC television and bring in $30 million a year. Yeah. Uh, yet on the other side, this guy who's a judge on a tattoo show, <laughs> he can't. You can be. Uh, one of the comments was uh, in the story was, well, I, guess, I hope he's learned the lesson of Justin Trudeau uh, that you can't wear blackface. <laughs> What less? The guy's There's running no a country. Yeah. He was reelected after the blackface thing. <laughs> like, what's the lesson? You could become prime minister of Canada if you wear yeah. blackface. Yeah. Um, instead, this guy's going to go into obscurity probably for for the rest of his life. He's remember, canceled. Steve. If you're okay with murdering the unborn and the high enough taxes, and you will really get strict on gun control. Just do it every October. Then you can okay. be what you want to be Halloween. for Halloween. Halloween. You can go back you, to you being whatever you want to be in November. To. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the way it works. It That's the way it works. That is categorically smart analysis right there. Yeah. I'm mean, stupid. This here. is what you get. That is, is what you get. This is, I mean, this he is the does America. Uh, do, doing I mean, America. Doing. Does America. <laughs> I wish you would write an etiquette book because these was, are things that we need to know. See, yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> these are very important Let's bring things. up Glenn Beck again because I was watching the show the other day with him and, uh, and you, and y'all were talking about the show. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm saying, man, this sounds like, and no sooner than I said that, or thought that, Glenn says, well, Debbie did Dallas, so Stu yeah. can do America. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Heck yeah. It's a Hopefully questionable. they're going to do some of the same things. Yeah. yeah. Questionable yes. decision to base the name on, a, on, a, on an old porn. I love it. Um, the music is great, though. It is. Yes. <laughs> it's a funky 70s vibe to it. I've been watching the promo crazy. stuff, of course. Um, the Blaze uh, Media turned over Instagram to you for the Democratic debates, which was a complete and total snooze fest on oh, Tuesday night. Brutal. So let's 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 get some more analysis real quick. I'm gonna throw out a couple of names mm -hmm. here. I want I just want your off the cuff opinion, and then we'll go from there. Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think, uh, and this debate convinced me of it. Is really a terrible person, mm -hmm. right? Like a fundamentally bad individual, right? I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders is, uh, you know, uh, would be an absolutely terrible president. However, do I believe he was behind the scenes in a meeting with Elizabeth Warren and just like, you know, what can't happen? Women be president. <laughs> There's just no way that occurred like that. Yeah. So Warren comes out because uh, Sanders has underlings, and they and they go out and I guess say that she's a little too elitist. Mm -hmm. Very tame campaign tactic, right? Then Warren leaks to the press blatantly that he said that she uh, she uh, he that that uh, Sanders did not believe a woman could be president. Um, her first answer was great because it was like, well, look, I'm not going to disclose anything that happened in a private meeting. It's like, wait, you're not going to come out and say he didn't say this? Like, I don't know. Did he say the N word, too? We're not sure. I can't say anything. It's a private meeting. Um, and then uh, she finally comes out and confirms it, says, yes, he said these things. I mean, that is just a terrible thing to do to someone yeah. she calls a friend for 20 years. Is it possible that Bernie Sanders said, you know, look, I, you know, I, I think, you know, Donald Trump's going to unfairly attack women. He's going to be a misogynist. Very possible. I'm sure that's his analysis. Yeah. But I mean, it's an obviously ridiculous thing. And then to call him out and and bring it up. It's like if it is sexist, what he said. Right. Then you're not going to be friends with him for 20 years. He's not a good candidate. It shouldn't be president, right? Mm -hmm. um, if it's not sexist, why the hell are you bringing it up? Why are you leaking it to the media? Why are you confirming it? And it just shows that she's just like a fun. I mean, look, she's lied about so much. Over and over. And Sanders, for all of his faults, isn't much of a liar. He just blurts things out that are socialist and should disqualify him from being president, but don't for some reason. <laughs> um, you know, but where where Warren is, I mean, she's fundamentally lies to the cameras. All the time. So I'm totally uh, believing Sanders on that one. And Warren is getting desperate, right? She's losing uh, now yeah. in Iowa. She's losing in New Hampshire. She needs to make a run. And this is that sort of, um, it's something that Beto O'Rourke um, copy, copy, had copyrighted when he was running, which is the, just sort of this Beto-style uh, desperation yeah. where you're just, you're reaching for the stars and you keep falling on your face. Did you see the little interaction at the end of it where he reaches out to shake her hand and yeah. she pulls back and then he pulls back and, you my, know, that little... My theory is she had just sneezed in her hand. 
Uh, so she was just being very nice and pulling the hand Think back. Think so? Yeah, no, yeah. no, I no. don't. Uh, yeah, it was weird because then they seemed to talk, but it, it looked like kind of like rough. And then poor Tom Steyer came over and like people were like, who's this weird white guy on stage? <laughs> and uh, tried to break it up. It was a weird interaction. And then he kind of does this and goes, we'll table this. Yeah. We'll table this yeah. and we'll come yeah. back. You crazy bitch. We'll come back. We'll be back with this. I did not. Okay, maybe I did use the N word. <laughs> it's, but we did that. We aired the clip of him in 88 saying... You know, he basically... But in a backroom me meeting, he could have simply said, I'm more electable than you are. Right, which is and, a, a plausible point, yeah. and honestly, and, and all, I, well, I don't think he's more electable than her, honestly. But right. also, I don't think anybody does. Yeah, but still, like, that is a very typical piece of analysis on the left, right? Like, there's this piece of analysis that, you know, and it's typical progressivism, right? They say, well... You know, we're enlightened. And of course, we would want a woman president. We would want a person of color to be president. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Hillary lost because she was a woman. If we put a person of color up there, there's just too many races, too many sexes. All those other people, you know, in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, they just can't pull. The, they, they can't get there. They're not to our intellectual level. Therefore, we need to run a Joe Biden. Right. We need to run some white guy who can be pretty progressive, but we can't get all the things we want because we have to keep them old and white and, and and boring. Um, it's funny because the, the Democrats don't win with that profile. John Kerry uh, is a good example of it. You know, uh, Gore is another one. Anyone who's like older and not like the dynamic young guy, new kid on the block yeah. typically loses for Democrats, but they keep trying to run them out there. I mean, the, what was the age of the combined age of the on that stage last night? I mean, a thousand, a thousand. There's six people. The combined age was a thousand. <laughs> that's that's incredible. Oh, now Bernie was seven hundred of that, but still, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a high combined age. I remember the Honus Wagner card <laughs> when it came out. I put it in a spoke of my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> he had a cigarette thing on the back. That's why it's so valuable. It's a cigarette uh, ad. He didn't like to smoke. Honus Wagner went into the Hall of Fame when Bernie was eighty. <laughs> <laughs> I was voting. I always love the baseball clips where he's out there showing them, showing these mo pro ball players how to hit you know oh. he's got his wrists all wrapped around the bat and he's showing them how to how to hit and it's like first of all any any coach that doesn't even know the game of baseball would tell you if you're showing a major leaguer how to hit like this and your hands are wrapped around oh my the bat gosh. stop it bernie Oh God, he's t what is that with him? I think it's this like attempt to like make him seem like he's not going to keel over in the next yeah. five minutes. We you know Elizabeth Warren does this. She like runs up to the stage every single time to show that she can run, and she looks like an old lady running is yeah. kind of what she looks like. Um, uh, did <laughs> it's you like see, a controlled fall. Did you see the video though of Bernie backing out of a driveway the other day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. He like swerves like he's drunk, like at zero miles an hour back and forth. He doesn't look out both ways out the window as he's backing up into the street. He's driving like this little tiny smart car. I mean, it was like the, everything you'd say about an old person an old driving person. Was, was reflected <laughs> in this clip. And I love when he's in the debate and they're trying to talk to him and they're asking him the questions. He's like, huh, hey, what, oh. oh. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, we went. Somewhere your campaign manager's got to be just ready to <laughs> eat a bullet. I mean, you know, here you are doing a gun. Uh, why don't you get one of those horns and go, hey! <laughs> we went by that uh, on the uh, Blaze Instagram thing, went frame by frame on that one. Because yeah. there's that moment where he realizes he can't hear it. And his answer is to bring his hand up and cup his ear so that the sound comes in and gets kind of caught in his hand and pushed extra sound into his ear. And he realizes that's not going to be enough. So then he folds the ear forward to catch even more. <laughs> like it is a like he has like a science to this. It's pretty impressive. I would say yeah. quite presidential. His most presidential 100%. moment. 100%. Yeah. I'm just glad his hair was laying down. <laughs> Good God. This is a guy that got kicked out of the commune for being lazy. Oh. So – Pete Buttigieg. Yeah. I, you know, Buttigieg is just, for a guy who actually has a pretty remarkable early part of his life, mm -hmm. he's very unremarkable. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I, I don't think Buttigieg has put in a, a debate performance that was any lower than a B minus or any higher than a B plus. Mm -hmm. He's relatively consistent, boring. He's a smart guy, I think. Um, he's able to kind of roll with the punches and he doesn't get flustered easily, um, which is uh, not a terrible profile to go up against Donald Trump. I mean, there's an argument for Buttigieg in that he's such the opposite of Trump in a debate where he's so much more, you know, calm and collected, where Trump is more on, of the attack dog. Yeah. It might be an interesting profile to see, but I don't think he's going to get through the primary. He just can't make he he's, can't make an impression. You know, Cory Booker has somewhat of that same problem, never found a base because he's just kind of unremarkable in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, him and uh, Klobuchar have sort of just blended in 
as uh, you know, just another set of voices. Nothing really remarkable. Nothing really terrible. Yeah. You know, but uh, you could see one of them maybe being a vice presidential thought at some point. Um, not, maybe not this time for Buttigieg, but you now you could see. I mean, Biden Buttigieg wouldn't be a shocker. No. If Biden were to win and pick pick him, I, it wouldn't be stunner or Biden, even Biden Booker. You could see those things. Buttigieg, I think, though, is I mean, look, the guy is still, you know, there's a guy, Wayne Messam. Did you mm-hmm. hear about him who ran Wayne Messam? He was a he used to play for Florida State. He was a he's a mayor of Miramar, Florida, ran for president zero percent the entire time. He, he actually for an entire quarter while he was running, raised a total of five dollars. I kid you not. It was in the report. Five dollars he raised. Um he runs a city bigger than Steve, Pete Buttigieg. You could do this. <laughs> you could do this. Steve. I think I could. I could raise. Five. I could raise ten. Oh yeah, easy, easy, easy. easy. Uh, you know, it's it's. I don't know that it, it's his time. I I do think that the, he's going to be a guy that's going to be in our faces for for a while though. Yeah. Uh, he was a guy that was. You know, one of the reasons why he did well and why we took him seriously early on when we were doing the analysis is that Obama identified him as a rising star. Obama made a stand in a speech, unprompted. You know who's a great guy is this guy from South Bend, Pete Buttigieg. You're going to love him. You're going to get to know him soon. And, you know, he's made a run. It's been Big an impressive yeah. uh, impressive run, but I don't think he's going to win the nomination. Yeah. For a guy with no black friends, he really is a dark horse. Uh, the, he's still, well, kind of kind of just kind of hanging in there. That's I mean, the it's true, though. Look, uh, he cannot – that's the biggest problem he's having. He cannot get any – black yeah. people to look at him at anything other than negative there's uh, really no way I yeah mean, it's, it's, they just did a poll where 41 percent of black voters would be uncomfortable or very uncomfortable supporting a gay candidate yeah. it's a huge problem for him and I, I, you know the he's lucky in that the first two states are like whiter than the debate <laughs> stage last yeah. night um so you have a, a if he could hit those first two states he might have a chance but uh, it's, it's an uphill battle gonna be an interesting deal to see you think if all this stuff's kind of lines out the way that it goes let's say there's a big impeachment trial and they start subpoenaing people and and senators have to do the work of senators Mm. does that hurt joe biden or is he going to hang in there with this deal you know i'm of the belief that you know people are so have their minds made up so much i actually think this should be a positive for biden at Mm. least in the primary and you know there's a kind of an argument i think where Biden has done a terrible job of this because he's not a very good candidate. I mean, he wasn't a good candidate in 1988, let alone in 2020. But, you know, you have this guy who, um, you know, Trump has put him on the marquee with him. Trump is saying, like, this story is about Ukraine. You know, if I'm I'm Joe Biden, I'm going out there every day and saying, you know what? Donald Trump got impeached. You know why? He was so terrified of me. Mm -hmm. He's calling foreign leaders and trying to get dirt on me. Now, that's not that true per se but when has that ever stopped joe biden true enough true Uh, enough for their standards yeah yeah, i think so and like i i think it's a way to say like uh, you know it's it's rocky versus apollo creed you know like your your name is on the marquee now take that you're the front runner you're the guy this is the the guy that donald trump is is afraid of and that's why they're trying to get rid of me um he's done a bad job i think taking advantage of that long term if there was a long trial i think in the general election if Republicans could do their jobs well, and that is a large if. Uh, there's a lot of damaging stuff there. I yeah. mean, you know, who knows what the heck they've been involved in? I mean, you know, you look at Hunter Biden's history, what stuff has gone on? And, and you know, you know this. Look, I think Biden at some level, the same way Lori Loughlin is, is kind of a good dad. Mm-hmm. And that like he's like, you know, I think of Lori Loughlin. She's kind of a good mom. Like, I mean, look, she shouldn't have done any of that stuff. But what was she trying to do? She's trying to do the best thing for her kid. Yeah, she's throwing her money around like, you know, in a way I kind of it kind of makes me like her. And, and in a way, I give a break with Biden in that. You're like, you like you look at Hunter Biden's history. It's been a disaster. And you picture your kid going through times like that when, you know, he basically can't go through a small town without impregnating a stripper like th- that is like. There are times where he probably stood up and said, "God, what can I do? I don't care. I don't care if it's right or wrong. I want to step- <laughs> look at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to do something to save my kid." Yeah, and, and he may have bent a lot of rules. And the more of that stuff that comes out, that could hurt him. I think in the general. Yeah. But as far as the primary goes, look, no, no, no Democrats are going to believe anything that the Republicans say anyway. I'd be running on. The, I'd be running this as a as a badge of honor. Every chance I'd have to to remind people that Donald Trump risked his presidency Mm -hmm. again this is their analysis not mine but risked his presidency to stop me that's how important he thought it was he's terrified of me 
why he doesn't go down that road more often, I don't know. That's the analysis you're going to get. Right there. Stu does America. Mm -hmm. It's analysis with humor. It's my favorite thing. And I really don't like anybody else around here but Stu. Yeah. I, I, no, the no. only show I watch. This is the only show I'm doing on this, this network. There it is. That's Boom. it. Boom. There it is. It's going to start on the 21st. On the 21st, it's going to be available. You can get Blaze TV. You're going to have it on the YouTube. Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube everywhere. We're going to start like some content preview stuff the 21st, yeah. and the full show starts the day after the caucus on February 4th. We've got some super big announcements that are coming up in regards to Blaze Media and Blaze TV and a lot of things that we're not talking about yet. And uh, this is a big, big ingredient to what's going to be happening in the days ahead. So I'm excited that because I said for a while I was like you need to bring back one world stew like, yeah, you need to bring that thing awesome back that. I appreciate and it and it was just a whole it was a whole bunch of stuff but I think this is going to be a better format and plus you get it on daily so yeah it's going to and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun I mean I, I, we, we, we need it we need more of it you know there's, yeah. there's not a there's not a there's not too many conservative voices out there yeah. uh, that's definitely not a problem America has yeah. so you know glad to uh, glad to do it and I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun you're going to yeah, come on right you're going to come on I'm going to absolutely right. I'm going to be there whether you know it or not the uh, <laughs> I, I, you watch this show and it's like getting a, every now and then you get a little tiny imperfect pearl out of all the crap that you dug through in the goo. <laughs> you watch Stu's show and you actually walk away with something. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Check him out and uh, always watch Chad.com. We're on the road. We're all over the place. Uh, Going to be in Everett, Washington, Saturday night. That is the birthplace of the one and only Glenn Beck. Oh, yeah, that's Everett, right. Washington. That's right. He, he had the uh, key to the city, I think, at one point. <laughs> yeah. He did. I think it, was, I think it was that one. It was one city yeah. over there. This uh, is Main Street Theater. This is our third year in a row. They keep having us back in Everett. Great. We keep big crowds They don't up. invite Glenn back, so no, oh, you're, sure you're lucky. <laughs> well, he's got the key. He can let himself any time. Uh, there's a curfew in Everett. Uh, but they were there, and they were Rocky Mount, Virginia. You ever been to Rocky Mount, Virginia? Nobody's no. ever been there. I have not been there. Yeah, no. South of Roanoke. We've got we to gotta figure out how we're going to get there. But uh, we're there on the 24th, and then, of course, the 30th in Bakersfield, 31st in Visalia, California, and on the 1st, Reno, Nevada. So go to watchchad.com, get some stuff. You can also get your Party File AF, uh, PFA. Look at you guys repping. Those are great shirts. PFAF, friends. baby. Party File is uh, friends. Yeah. Party File is friends. Pray for all Pray friends. Pray for all friends. Oh, that's, nice. foul. that's really nice. All friends. Yeah, anyway. Get them at watchchad.com. We got all kind of stuff. We're actually sold out of a couple of sizes of the unapologetic Patriot, and we're they, not replacing them. So there's still some that you want to get there. We're not replacing that design. We'll always do something unapologetic Patriot, but that design going away. And we're going to get the cameras out, Mark. We're going to go when Steve gets that design tattooed on his inner thigh. Mike, you got to come for that because it's just going to be one big black gloop. No, when you say I need to come for that, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody needs a little salve on the scab. You know what I mean? Anyway, oh look, my phone's ringing right there. There is uh, <laughs> there's Tyler Tyler Carden right there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, check it out. Be sure to get it. Stu does America, and oh, he's gonna do it. Mm. We love y'all. God bless. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.